Arlene Tamie Tatsuno Gamron. Um, I'm what, 77? Uh, I'm Sansei. I was born in Topaz relocation camp during the war, World War II, Topaz, Utah. Incarceration was between 42 and 45. My father was, have, was known for having taken the only unauthorized home movie ever taken in an internment camp. And it's, the film was in color. He donated the original film to the Japanese American National Museum. And uh, it was nominated for the Library of Congress Film Registry, I believe in 96 or 97. Uh, my parents never, uh, they never told us really what camp was. Um, they didn't editorialize. As children, we just, every, every once in a while, we would grow up watching that film. And it was only until later, as you're getting older, then you start thinking, wait a minute, we were from San Francisco. Our grandparents were from Oakland. Other people from, were from other parts of the Bay Area, neighbors. Why were we in Utah? Our family had, had returned from camp. And so in 1946, they re reopened the store and they changed the name to NB Department Store because Nichibe Busan was a little too ethnic sounding after World War II, all right? And on July 11th, 1948, we opened here. 19, oh, about 80, 1981, I think. That was not intentional. I was a stay-at-home mom raising our two sons. We were active with them. Um, I had originally thought I was going to be a teacher, but I dropped out and got married instead, raised our sons, and I was a teacher's aide. And then, so I was a teacher's aide and a parent volunteer at school, and Dad said, you know, I could help, need some help with banking. Can you help me a couple times a week? So that's really how I got back to the store. Do what I call juggling the plates. The object was to get all the plates up, rotating on the top of the sticks with no, no, nothing falling. So what you're constantly doing is going back and jiggling. You can never finish any of them and just ignore them, but you always have to kind of jiggle the plates. Now Japanese Americans are not just all Japanese anymore, right? Well, over the years, you know, I guess when we first opened, it was the Nisei, Issei and Nisei, and then it became Nisei and Sansei, and now it's, as Nisei are passing, then it's Sansei and Yonsei. Our stores is something for people of all, all different ethnicities and ages and anybody who likes Japanese things and Japanese culture. Amelia Saito. I am 31 years old. I'm third generation Japanese American or Sansei, but I'm fairly young for a Sansei. Like a lot of Sanseis, they're like twice my age or even older. And that's because my, um, when I was born, my dad was like 50 years old. So my dad was born in San Jose and then quick, like quickly after they were sent to the camps. I didn't really know anything beyond that. And that my dad was there when he was like three to five years old. The racism that he endured afterwards. Um, internment and the racism that my dad and his family endured during that time. Um, my dad wanted me to grow up um, in an English only speaking household because he was scared of me developing an accent and um, basically just out of protection um, wanted me to just be speaking English. I didn't understand the difference between Japanese and Japanese American when I was young. And so when, um, when I was a teenager uh, in middle school, that's when anime and manga was becoming a big like thing, Japanese pop culture. And so I would have classmates be like, oh, like, you know, this 
this like thing from Japan or like this thing that I saw in an anime. Do you know anything about it? Or they would ask me like, oh, Melia, do you know how to speak Japanese? Have you ever been to Japan? And whenever I would say no, or like, oh, I don't know, um, I would feel like I was disappointing them. And they, you know, the classmates would ask like, oh, so why don't you know how to speak Japanese? Or, you know, oh, why? Or, you know, oh, your dad doesn't speak Japanese? Why? And I didn't know how to answer those questions. project was that catalyst. It was the opportunity for me to um, use this project as a way to start those conversations. And so my particular art piece, um, that's kind of the theme about it. Um, the theme around it is um, questions for reflection, questions for um, conversation, and they were questions that I asked myself throughout this process of conceptualizing my art piece. So questions like, you know, how do two different generations connect through art? That's when I was able to, you know, connect the dots as to, oh, okay, this is why, you know, this is why we don't speak Japanese. Like, this is why I was never taught the language. Um, and so being able to connect the dots, that was, that made me be able to feel more pride in my heritage and um, like our history. And even though it was a very, uh, just like, like an upsetting and um, just, you know, it's it's this piece of history that we went through is just very traumatizing, very um, embarrassing, like very upsetting. But just being able to, you know, go through that and, um, you know, fight for, um, you know, fight for these rights, fight for these human rights and making sure it doesn't happen to other people, other people of color, other marginalized groups, um, I feel like that's where that's where I feel the cultural pride in. I feel like our unique history here in the U.S. is um, is important too.